Hey boys and girls, how's it going? This is Bill from Hangar Rats and we're back on the 0360 build, custom build on this one. Today we're going to be talking about painting. This should be uh, kind of interesting. Kind of, you'll learn, hopefully you learn a few things and uh, this will be one episode you probably don't want to miss. Okay, so now we've got all our parts back from the engine overhaul shops or the machining shops and all that. Uh, we brought, them, brought all the parts back and we've started to paint the components. Now on this particular engine, we are painting the, the components. The crankcase has the uh, ring gear, the accessory case, the sump and all that. We're painting them separately. You don't have to do that. For a fleet engine, there's nothing wrong with painting an engine altogether. When I was in the uh, repair station years ago, and folks are doing it today, even the factory does it. Uh, we would just hang the engine by the hook, roll it into the paint booth, uh, completely clean it, degrease it and all that, and paint the engine as one big chunk. Uh, we'd have cover plates and all that kind of stuff on it, but we would paint it as one big item. On this particular build, we're buying four brand new cylinders, so they don't need to be repainted. They don't need to be cleaned up. So that kind of forces us a little bit on this, that we're gonna paint it as a bit of a component. Um, now there's nothing wrong with painting the crankcase assembly, accessory case and sump all, all bolted together as a unit. Nothing wrong with that. I don't prefer doing that. Uh, a lot of folks, again, if it's a fleet engine, it's not a problem. The factory does it that way. The problem I have with that is when you start getting um, the paint, uh, once it gets a little time and temperature on it and all that, the paint will start falling off the CAD plated parts because the CAD is inherently, as far as paint's concerned, kind of slippery and it uh, doesn't like to stick well to the CAD plated parts. It'll stick better to raw steel. Think about your car. It'll stick better to raw steel than it will to a plated part. So for that reason, I, will, I typically will mask this uh, both crankcase halves up and then assemble them uh, or, or paint them uh, mask them all up, paint them, then assemble with all the hardware and all that. It, it's a better looking engine. It looks a little more trick, a little more custom, but most importantly is we don't have to worry about paint falling off down the road. So that uh, it's just an aesthetic thing. It's, it's a detail thing. That's the way I like to do it. So what we've got here is uh, we've got the ring gear, uh, starter ring gear assembly and all that. That's all been painted. It's been uh, bead blasted, alodined. Um, and then uh, that's the, the gold color here, the Alodyne process or uh, chemical film, depending on what, what uh, brand you're into. Um, and then we've masked it and then we've painted it um, with the, the customer's required uh, color. This is a custom build for an experimental aircraft. It's a full FAA build, but it just has a custom color on it. The, uh, and just like the factory does. The, um, the one thing that's real important is anytime anything is going to attach to something else, you do not want paint there. So this is where the propeller goes. Uh, that will be kept, uh, that's kept clean. Uh, where the alternator drive belt goes is kept clean. So we don't keep anything on there. On the back where it goes onto the propeller hub, that's kept clean. So that's all masked off. It's a little bit tedious, but very important to do. The other thing that's real important too is when we are cleaning it up, we uh, identify where the uh, zero mark is for the large bore, uh, large bore bushing. And um, so that's all, that's all cleaned up. We can identify that, that's great. We've got our markings for our timing, both on the front and the back, are, have all been cleaned up. So we'll actually infill those with some uh, different color paint so it's a little easier when we're doing our annuals and uh, insulation. These cases have not been painted. Well, why haven't they been painted? <clears throat> What's going on? Well, these didn't get painted because we had not measured them yet. We don't want to go and paint anything until we confirm all the dimensions coming back from the machine shop. Real important. So I don't want to have to go in here and then find out that I've got a dimension wrong, something needs a grind, and then it's got to go back to the machine shop. Machine shop goes and does their thing and then ends up basically messing up our paint, our paint job. So I want to make sure everything's good. This particular case set, we've just finished the, the dimensioning on it and uh, everything's looking good. As you can see, we're doing a lot of masking all the different various and sundry shapes. A uh, couple different ways folks do it. You can either tape it off, put a piece of rubber hose on your, uh, your different fittings. I prefer to make sure the end of the studs are all painted, so I mask them up that way. Um, <clears throat> we also mask the, um, we also mask the uh, cylinder 
areas off and all that and I just mask where the cylinder goes. So you can do a couple different ways. You can actually have a cylinder, you can have some dead cylinders. Uh, we've got some here. We've used in the past, if you have a, some extra cylinders, you can actually just set this down. A lot, saves a lot of taping. And it's hot in here again. So that's, um, that's what we have here. This is, um, this is where the uh, oil pressure uh, goes. There's also, real important, there's um, uh, a lot of different screws for attaching different um, baffles and things like that. We don't want to fill those holes with paint, so we make sure those are masked off very well. So that's, that, that's going on there. Uh, one of the things I like to use when I'm masking is I like to use dots. <clears throat> now these dots here, uh, I think they're actually used in the, maybe the powder coat industry or whatever. They're, uh, they're called a high temperature. If you Google round, dot, round masking dots, um, you'll end up coming up with them. But these are actually just a, a little mylar deal. The size I use most on these uh, like homings is uh, 5 8 And uh, what you can do is just put that there, boom. And it, uh, it's, it makes for quick masking for your bolt holes. Again, same thing there. And the real reason we want to mask those bolt holes is we don't want any paint under a fastener that's going to get any kind of torque applied. So boom, there's another one. So that kind of goes fast. If you're masking off a crankcase uh, set, you really want to do a nice job. You just figure two or three hours and you can do it on the kitchen table and take your time doing it. So most importantly is get everything masked off. We have cleaned these crankcases. We have measured them. Once we get done painting, we'll remove all the masking. They will be cleaned again. Uh, they'll be bagged prior to assembly. They'll be cleaned again. So most importantly, we want to make sure there's no FOD, there's no assembly um, debris from the original machining or from what we've done. We want to make sure there's no masking in here. So that's, that's kind of the crankcase set. Then we've got all sorts of little doodads. Here's a, uh, a governor, uh, <clears throat> vacuum pump pad. Again, we don't want to have anything where a gasketed surface is, so we uh, will make sure that that is uh, cleaned. The, the uh, plated parts, uh, hoist hook, uh, alternator bracket, uh, cooling bracket and all that, those we're just going to leave bare. We're just going to leave those absolutely bare um, because they're gonna, that's where wrenches are going to hit and it'll probably get chipped and all that through its life. Uh, governor, governor cover plate, again, same thing, bead blast, alodyne primed and painted. Um, same thing, this is a magneto adapter uh, spacer, so that's that. Uh, one of the things we did do is uh, when you get your cylinders, you get, uh, we're putting four brand new millenniums in, you get this beautiful CAD plated um, valve cover. And it looks nice and all that, but what we decided to do there is on this one, we bead blasted our old one. If you remember on our plating episode, I didn't send these out for plate. So what we've done here for this engine, again, it's gonna, this is going to be a real good looking engine. Um, we're using the original OEM valve covers and we've uh, primed and painted these and blocked those out. So these are, this is going to be the, the jewelry, so to speak, when we're uh, reassembling this engine when it's installed. So that's something the owner can talk about at the air show is pop the cowling open. Um, other things too, push rod tubes, all these things kind of take a, kind of take a little bit of a unique masking, but push rod tubes. So we did the push rod tubes are all uh, painted. The uh, intake pipes, we're leaving those bare because again, that's where a lot of clamping gets done. Those are going to be just a uh, CAD plate finish. We had those, I think in the last episode. Um, so that's what's going on there. You can see on this crankcase here, Again, the entire inside has all been masked. The back has been masked. There's uh, some areas here for where your engine mounts go, but there's also areas where typically the uh, Lycoming puts grounding, uh, grounding holes for uh, various, well, they're just machine holes. A lot of OEMs or uh, home builders will use those for your ground cable. So you want to mask those off to make sure you have a very good ground. We've had an aircraft years ago. Uh, a lot of times your starter problems and charging problems, believe it or not, are going to be grounding issues, not electrical issues. It's, it's, it's kind of odd. You do a great job making something beautiful and you end up putting eh, just a little bit too much paint on it. Um, so again, there's different ways of masking it off. You can take, uh, one way you can do it is you can take uh, gaskets, gaskets, um, tape it to a, a piece of uh, a smooth table or something, cut it out with a razor blade, not your wife's table or your boyfriend's table. Um, put your uh, 
you can, you can cut it out in the shape of a gasket, then tape that onto the back of the engine. That's one way of doing it. Um, another way is actually cutting out, these are some magneto covers that we've used. You can see they were on Continental engines, Continental Gold there. Uh, this is a starter drive for an 0300. So there's all different ways of doing it. Um, these are uh, candelabra uh, intake pipes on an 0300. Uh, or you can just, like I said, you can cut this out, tape some stuff to a, a smooth surface, cut it out, and you can apply that. So that's one way of doing it. This is kind of the more complex um, masking jobs you're going to have is your accessory case because that's where all the accessories are. So you can see we've got the fuel pump pad, two magneto pads, vacuum pad, governor pad and all that, and then all of the attaching fasteners. You can see we've, we've stripped all the masking out of this. All the attaching fastener positions have all been uh, had the tape removed or had the kept paint off of it. Um, where we have uh, various and sundry plumbing fittings going in, those were all, uh, when we put this together, they were put in with, um, with plugs, taping plugs or uh, pipe plugs. So what I typically like to use on those is, I like to use, uh, here's a big one, I like to use PVC. PVC, I mean, you can use, you can go down to the hardware store and get steel ones or brass ones. I like to use PVC because they're, they won't tear anything up. They won't hurt the aluminum and all that. So just get a handful of those. They're very inexpensive. And that's where we are here. You can see again on this one here, all the ends of the studs are painted. When they, this goes into the machine shop, typically they'll bead blast this and they, the ends of these, it's just a, a nerd thing for me. The ends of these, uh, after a while, what happens is it, it uh, the CAD plate gets worn off. Um, so when we put these back together, at least we know that when this engine leaves out of here, the ends of the studs aren't going to be rusty or, or looking nasty. So that's a uh, 0360A4K accessory case. Uh, looks pretty nice. Again, we've done the work on this. We've done the painting. This will again get cleaned, uh, bagged prior to assembly, cleaned uh, again, and then checked. And just eyes on, eyes on. It's all on us, so we got to make sure that, that uh, that's stuff is looking good. So that's it for painting, kind of pretty quick. Uh, in the factory, uh, you buy a uh, Thunderbolt engine or something like that, they'll shoot it with whatever color paint you want, but what they'll, what they'll do is they'll assemble the, the core engine, um, the, the two crank cases, accessory case and sump, and then they'll put their masks on it or a blanking plates, and then they'll spray paint the whole thing. What we shoot on this is we actually shoot a urethane on other engines. This is what I do. On other engines, I'll shoot an enamel with a urethane clear top coat. Most re the whole, whole important reason there is it's very light color. It's a very light coat, but it's very easy to clean and very easy to find leaks if you do have leaks. So real important is you want to be able to maintain the engine. Uh, and what we this particular uh, paint product here is a, is a urethane. It's not heavy. It's very thin. Where you're going to have issues, you'll hear people talk about the different coatings and all that, is really on your cylinders. Um, I've had cylinders where that's where the heat is. That's where something bad happens. That's where the heat's going to be. So they, typically, if you have an overheat in a cylinder, you'll see the paint burn. And again, those, those cylinders are coming all painted, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, other things that's real important, too, is where your starter bolts on to. We make sure that that is also not painted so we have a good ground. So that, that surface there, that's how your starter gets its ret per, the return path for ground. Um, there's some other lugs on the, uh, on the, um, there's some other lugs on the uh, engine on the other crankcase for your alternator mounting and all that. And we make sure that those are also masked. So think about that. You don't want to paint anything that a bolt will torque onto and you don't want to paint anything that is a return path for an electrical accessory. So real important there. That's about it. It's, uh, it's Texas. It's hot as heck as it always is. So you guys have a good time. Next time we're going to start assembling engine parts. So next time we'll probably end up, uh, we're going to be doing a crankshaft buildup and start putting these crankcases together. So until then, hang a rats out. Oh, hey, make sure, please do subscribe, notify, uh, share, all that good stuff. Um, and comment. If you have any questions or whatever, comment. Let us know. This is the way I do it. This is the way we've been doing it for uh, 30, 40 years. This is the way I was taught. So anything you need, any questions you have, let us know. We don't know it all, but this, these engines have been overhauled for the last, 
Well, these, these series of engines, it goes back prior to World War II between Lycoming and Continental. So you're looking at a good 80 years. So there's, uh, I shouldn't say there's no new things, but uh, a lot of this stuff has been done by others. Most importantly, if you're a home builder, ask, uh, have a mechanic, or uh, one of your local mechanics, aircraft mechanics who has done this kind of work, have them help you through it, work with them, uh, but get somebody to help you on your first build. It's gonna be fairly critical. Uh, this thing is keeping you alive. For all you licensed mechanics, if this is your first build, again, get somebody who's already done it before, walk through them, work with a machine shop or an engine shop, go through it. But um, you don't want to really be doing this cold, you know, unless you, you're stuck in the North Pole and you got to get home. But most importantly, um, don't mess up. Use all, the, use all the documents. On the next episode, we're going to be talking about service instructions. We didn't really talk about that. We're going to talk about that a little bit, and that's kind of the how-to of putting the engine together in addition to the pubs that we talked about last time. So, again, uh, anything you guys can do, uh, like I said, thank you for all your support. We're closing in on 2,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. If you have some ideas for some new stuff, let us know. We're going to have some things coming up here in a couple months um, I think you really enjoy. So this engine here is going together. By the time, uh, let's see, in about, uh, in about a week, this engine will be shipped out to a customer, but we're gonna have your videos here in the next couple of weeks. You're gonna see the final build and all of that. So we're gonna try to do a good job and, and keep you guys, uh, give you guys some good, good info on this. Most importantly, go use the publications, use your, your various and sundry maintenance manual, service instructions, all the factory pubs for these engines, the stuff's out there. There's no reason not to do a good job. And remember, it's on you. And the one thing you don't want to have on first flight is an engine failure. So make sure you do it right. Assume nothing. Double check, triple check, whatever it takes. So you guys have a good time. In the meantime, rats out.